If you use a credit card, you're gonna wanna watch this. Just doing a little bit of grocery shopping as you normally would, except for this bit. Did you catch what just happened? Let's watch that again. Right about here. I just got his credit card information. Wanna see it again? Watch this. Keep your eye on this bag and my right hand. Still confused? Let's tell you what's going on. With this device that I've got tucked up in my sleeve, if I wanted to, I could have got people's credit card information. Let's head back to the studio. I'm gonna show you what this device is all about and how you can protect yourself. So here I've got a credit card that is a contactless card. Basically the ones that you go to the shop and simply tap on the machine, also known as a tap and go. Now watch this. Here is my card. Here is this device. I simply hover over it. Just by holding this device near this card, I've just read the card's information. This device is called Flipper. It's a tiny portable Swiss army knife of various hacking tools. With a couple of taps, I open up an NFC section on this device and read the credit card information. Now that you see how simple it is, how do you protect yourself? So it's all based around NFC, near field communication. And that's the key word, near. Therefore, the device has to be near the credit card in order for it to activate the antenna that's built in here and the mechanism and read the information. Well, if that's the case, let's use the exact same card, but this time let's put a barrier between the card and the flipper. Here I've got one of the Amazon packaging envelopes. It's pretty thick because it's meant to protect whatever is inside. I'm gonna take that, put the card underneath, and let's see if the flipper can read it. Read it, no problem. The next option, I saw some products being advertised as radio frequency blockers and NFC blockers. So, of course, I bought some. Let's see if those actually do the trick. I'll have links to this in the description in case you want to check it out. And in here, this is the sleeve. Essentially, it's a Faraday cage that's inside here. So, what I'm going to do is take my card, slide it into here. And now, let's see if the flipper can read it. What do you guys think? Flipper's ready, in read mode. Let's see what it does. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. And just to show you that it's happening in real time, let's just take the card out halfway and watch. <laughs> and it just read it. To be honest, it's a bit of a pain having to slide each one of the cards into one of those little sleeves and put that into your wallet. So I found a second product. Let me show you that. This one is an RFID and NFC blocking card. So basically it's no sleeve. The entire card is supposed to protect this card. And the idea with this is that you just simply stick it into your wallet or stick it into your purse. And because it's near this, it should block the flipper from being able to scan it. I don't know, let's see if that actually works out. So here is my very old wallet. So I'm gonna put one card in there and I'm gonna close it up and see if it reads. And yes, it does. Now, let's open up the wallet. Let's take one of these RFID blocking cards and just put it some random slot in there. Let's close it up and let's see if it reads again. And this time it doesn't. One more time, flip the wallet over so that the card's near the top. Still doesn't read it. It looks like this actually does the job. But you actually don't need this card if you don't put your card where it's easily accessible. So in the middle of the bag, I place my card. It's pretty padded. If I take my reader and I stick it straight above that card, it does not read it. But if I go near the top where there's virtually no padding, if I slide my card in there and then I try to scan it, well, then it does get scanned. Now I know you want to go and look up flipper videos online, but be aware that so many of them are fake. Like the one that shows that you can actually use flipper to make a payment with that stolen card information. Well, we're about to test that. Totally fake. You cannot make payment using that stolen credit card information using the flipper. But now, what about using that information to be able to shop online? Well, that one is kind of true. You see, the flipper does give you the credit card information and the expiry date. But the one thing it doesn't give you is the CVV number. And now you're thinking, whoa, hold on a second. Every website needs the CVV number. Actually, that's not true either. With a quick Google search, you will see that there are plenty of websites that do not require the CVV number. With the most famous one being 
Amazon. When you add a new card, you will notice that it only asks for the credit card number and the expiry date, not the CVV number. And that information, my flipper can read. Now, it may be different in your country. It may be different when opening a new account versus adding a new payment method. But a quick Google search will reveal loads and loads of websites that don't require that CVV number. Oh, before I forget, it's important to know that that bag that I showed you getting the information, that actually belonged to my wife. So obviously, I didn't steal anybody's information. And that person in the first grocery store is somebody that I know. I'm happy to show you more of the other tools that the flipper can do in future videos. Just let me know in the comments if you want to see those videos so that you know how to protect yourself. In the meantime, if you keep your phone's Wi-Fi on, even when you're not at home, this would be a massive mistake and check out this video right over here if you haven't already. Also check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe if you like this kind of cool tech and I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.